So we've got our spine and our covers and our embellishment here, which is really sweet. And we're going to use a piece of uh, flower sack tea, tea cloth or tea towel fabric. And we are simply going to basically glue it onto here. And then hopefully it's going to reveal this still. Now it's a little bit um, easy to see now, but when we paint it, it, it will all look one color. But that's step two. So now we want to cut this. We can trim it to be a more appropriate size. And why don't we do that? So figure, you know, a couple of inches on each side is plenty. And we may trim it more after we glue it. Okay, and then definitely trim off any bound edges because we want the fabric to have the freedom to shape itself. Now that looks good. Ultimately, we will trim and miter these corners, but I'm going to go ahead and glue them into place first, and then we'll do that. So now I've got two things of Mod Podge here. I'm not sure if one of them is fresher than the other. And I have a clean yogurt container that I'm going to pour some Mod Podge into. And with this reasonably centered, and again, we're going to trim it a little bit more before we're done. I'm going to just pull it back. I'm going to Mod Podge the spine because we're going to do that part first. And we want a good amount of Mod Podge on everything on the jute, on the paper, not so much in there yet, but there's a little and that'll be okay. So I'm just using a cheapo brush. And you want to get this all good and gooed up. This Mod Podge is good. It feels a little weird. Okay, so that's a good amount, I think, for our purposes. So now, stay. If you take this across, lay it down and begin to shape it. So as I shape it, I'm running fingernails. Could use a bone folder here to form the sewing ridges that we're trying to mimic. Keep going along both sides of the spine and again oh, I could finish the sentence again we want to just keep forming it so we can use fingernails we can use bone folders we can use embossing styluses anything that helps us get a good crisp edge. That'll happen later. This lower edge, the upper and lower edges will happen later. And just take your time. Again, my word of the year is patience. So I'm trying to not rush it. I'm trying to make sure I get Everything stuck that needs to be stuck. Okay. 
Okay. So now, just through here again, just to make sure everything along the edges is stuck. I'm going to let that sit a bit before I start mucking too much. And I will probably, over the course of the next few minutes, come back and simply form these structures with a variety of tools, but really your fingernails work just fine. And I don't have any fingernails. I had some, but between making watercolor pigment and cleaning up a variety of things, I have lost them. But they'll grow back. They're pretty robust. Okay, this part, I feel like I'm gonna make sure that this bottom bottom is good. All right, so I'm gonna let this sit just for a few minutes and then I will finish with gluing up the cover. Okay, so I think this is dry enough to work with. Um, you really do wanna make sure it's pretty stable before you start mucking with it, but it feels like it is. It's mainly room temperature, which is a good indication that it's dried. So I'm going to pull this back. And you can see a little bit got on to the cover here, which we don't want yet. So I'm going to pull it off the cover. There we go, so that I can get additional glue in this, in this area. So now, let's see how we're doing on Mod Podge. I probably should have covered this up. So now we are going to basically Mod Podge this. And we're do it in such a way that we get lots of glue inside all of these areas because we want our fabric, our tea towel, to stick. I said towel. Tea towel to stick in all of these places. So just tap, tap, tap. And then once all of that area is done, we can do the rest of the cover with a little bit more or a little bit less attention and care. Well, it's never less care, right? Well, okay, maybe sometimes. So now I also want to get a little glue right down this edge. go. Alright, that should be good. Plenty of, plenty of glue in all the right places. Now remember what I said, if you have something that's making a lump or anything, it is going to show on your cover. So you want to pull off any hickeys or widgets. Right, I think that looks good. So now I'm going to take this back and beginning with this side, sorry about the head, just lay it down. So now I'm going to take a stenciling brush and just pat this all so it gets in there and that it sticks. and reveals the reveal. So this is a fairly cheap stencil brush you can see because it's losing its bristles. So another thing you can do is come in here with one of these stylus and basically encourage it to go in all the places you want. And but be careful because you can rip it. The fabric that is. Okay. But that just helps it along. And then you do want to make sure that it's spread out all in the other areas as well. Not spread out but bonding. That's nice. 
And again, it's possible I wanted three layers of this cardboard that I used. Here's the back of this to get that attached. And we'll just let this do its thing. It's going to have to dry. Optimistic. Okay, so somewhere I have an even smaller stencil brush I can keep pouncing into the negative areas to try and get the sharpest image possible. I think that's working nicely. And again, this is the most important part for the cover in terms of getting enough definition. So you just kind of keep following the artwork. So you get the idea. I'm going to keep doing this or keep paying attention to it as it dries and pounce it a little here and there. I'm also going to now add the tea towel to this side. So that's so much easier and I'll speed this up. Okay, so you see that? We're good. This I'm still going to play with a little. We do want to make sure we have enough play in that seam. And then we're good. See, there we don't. See, so lift it up a little bit. So I'm going to make sure I come back and play with that a little. All right, so this I will still be mucking with as it dries because I'm just that way. It's probably perfectly fine by now, but like I want to get in there, so I'm going to come in here, press, just so there's a definition in all of these spaces. Okay, so now I want to get a clean piece of freezer paper. I'm going to do the other side. Okay, so that should be enough for this. Put this down. And again, we want to make sure that we have enough going on. Both sides here. Let me make sure with the bone folder. All right, so now I'm going to flip it over and we're going to finish the cover, finish covering the cover. So it looks like we have more, more than we need here. I'm going to take off an inch. Well, that was about a half inch. I'm going to take off an inch. 
So it's trimmed down to maybe an inch and a half, two inches maximum. So we want to miter our corners and we do that by simply coming in and then like so. That's leaving a little more than we need. But in this method or this kind of covering, I like to leave a little extra because it's very malleable and yet I want to make sure my corners are covered. So I'm just going to do it this way. And that's leaving lots of extra, but that's okay. Extra, in this case, extra is not too much. Okay, so we've got that. And now we are going to do a little bit of, this one's still a little bit bigger than it needs to be. Let me just trim it down. Okay, so now we just need to add some more Mod Podge, not on our hands, but into the jar. And we want to cut here. So we're going to sort of gusset it there and there on each side of the spine, top and bottom. Because that will help with excess fold over. All right, so that's the front. Okay, let me turn it around because I like being oriented this way. This is the front. In fact, sometimes it's helpful front, back, because you could easily get it upside down. So this will help us. Okay, so now this feels really good. It's beautiful. Now we're going to finish this up. And we're going to do that first with the spine. Want to make sure you get it in on the edge and then down. I'm going to pull this in. Voila. And then the other side, again, making sure you get the edge of the spine. I'm going to pull this up. All right, so that was a little bit more glue than maybe we needed, but that's okay. Again, these types of journals, more is, is not too much. So we're just going to go with it. So now I'm going to do the top and bottom of this side. And again, you want to make sure you get enough on the edge. And you can get a little bit extra. That's okay. So you're going to pull that down. this down and make sure you have enough going on on the edge because you want nice strong edges okay perfect now the same on the bottom container we just want to make sure that we're doing getting good, good edges 
and then we could do the long edge again. Hit that edge. And oh, so here we want to fold this in and make sure that there's some glue on this corner here. And then we can fold it in and it will be beautiful. Same this side, fold it in. We can trim it later if needed. Pull that. You do want it tidy, if tidy is possible. It's my feeling anyway. Sometimes tidy is not possible. Okay, you want to make sure that this edge is good and square and that your corner is covered. And that one is beautiful. So now same thing here, a little bit more Mod Podge. And again. sure that there's enough glue and there wasn't for that area. side Good, nice corner there. Work on the edge of the cover. See here we have a little hiccup there. I'm gonna pull that over there. We go. Get a nice, nice edge. Okay. So and then this we want a good strong fore edge. So we're gonna hit it with the bone folder a couple of times. I have a nice sharp edge there. And the back cover as well. Okay, so now, here we have it. I'm going on this for now. And it still needs a little bit of attention. And we want to take our covers And sort of put this crease in. And to do that, you could just use your bone folder and basically just keep encouraging it to go in. Now this is not a mandatory step. Some people don't care. But I like it. And 
and then on the other side as well. And you want to keep, as it's drying, and don't worry about all of these little parts that will come loose, because they will. They'll get trimmed and glued again. Um, but while it's drying, you do want it to be reasonably in aligned so that the foredge of the book is in good, good alignment. So, yeah, this is one of those. This one was fine until this part right here. And then it's like, no, I don't want to go in. I don't want to go in. This part. So I'm going to open this up again, have a look at it, see what's going on. It seems okay. And I'm going to give it a little bit, give it a second chance at doing what I want. There we go. So again, this is sort of the finesse part, and not everybody even cares about this part. So we've got lots of excess glue in various spots, but it all dries just fine. Okay, for some reason, this little section here does not want to behave in the way I would most like it to. So I'll play with that a little bit, but otherwise, she is beautiful. Curved spine. She sits, she stands, she's beautiful. So I'm going to leave her to dry. I mean, it's a her, but it is. And then I'll come in and I'll trim some of these little spots where I feel like there might be some excess fabric in there. And that could be what's making my little funkiness down here. In fact, it does look like that's what's making my funkiness this little bit of extra fabric. So that's all able to be deal, dealt with after the fact. But you can see I've got a nice, nice spine happening here. And as long as we keep our edges sharp, we'll be good. So there you have it. I'll be back. I'm going to let it sit here for a while. This table, there's a high spot right here. So there we go.